Hi, I'm attorney Bill Bronchick, and in this video I'd like to explore with you the difference between a lease option or lease with option or lease purchase and an agreement for deed or contract for deed or installment land contract. So let's first start with the designation of the names. Lease option, lease purchase, rent to own, all the same animal. Contract for deed, installment land contract, agreement for deed, bond for title, all the same animal. So basically we have two different things and we'll call one a lease option or lease with option and the other one we'll call a contract for deed. Now generally speaking the main difference between the two has a lot to do with the finances not necessarily the legal distinction although there are many legal distinctions between the two. A lease with option is a landlord-tenant relationship, a lease agreement, with or in a separate agreement an option to purchase in favor of the tenant. The terms are spelled out in a lease agreement, how much the tenant is going to pay in rent and so forth, and the option agreement, if it's separate or it's combined, will spell out the terms of the purchase. Now a lease with option is not really a sale for certain purposes and for others it is. So, for example, for the purposes of disclosures that may be required by your state or municipality or even federal disclosures like lead, I would err on the safe side and, and give the same disclosures you would on a sale or a lease on a lease option because even though it's technically a landlord-tenant relationship with an option to buy, some municipalities or states might consider that a sale for the purposes of disclosure, so I would err on the side of over-disclosure. Whereas a contract for deed or installment land contract is a sale for sure. It is not a landlord-tenant relationship. Now that means for the purposes of disclosure, you do the regular disclosures you'd be required to do by your state, municipality, or the federal government on a sale of a property. The main difference between the two comes in the tax realm. A lease with option generally is not a sale for tax purposes. It is reported as a landlord-tenant relationship where the landlord slash seller is continuing to depreciate and continuing to report income and expenses like a rental. And then when the option is exercised by the tenant, it becomes a sale. That means in the interim, the tenant slash buyer cannot deduct the lease payments that he makes as interest on a Schedule A as he would if he owned the property. Now, is it possible a lease option could be recharacterized by the IRS as a sale? Yes. A long-term 15-20 year lease with option with a declining balance that looks like a loan amortization can look and smell like a sale and can be treated as such by the IRS. So if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, you know the expression. But generally speaking, a short-term lease with option, one, two, three, maybe even four years with a fixed purchase price, even if there are some uh, credits that the tenant will get for making payments towards the purchase price still looks and smells more like a landlord tenant relationship with a personal option that the tenant has to buy which is not a sale until the option is exercised for tax purposes. Now a contract for deed is clearly a sale. Now what's weird about that is in the contract for deed title remains in the seller's name and the buyer and seller sign a contract where the buyer is going to put some money down probably, make payments of principal and interest, treat the property as his own, be responsible for repairs and improvements and so forth. So for all intents and purposes it is a sale even though title doesn't pass until the buyer pays off the balance of the contract. I know that's confusing because like a lease option title remains in the seller's name but the IRS has ruled many times that a contract for deed is a sale and is reported as a sale. As a sale by the seller even though title remains in the seller's name. Now, for tax purposes that means the buyer on a contract for deed can deduct his interest payments that he makes to the seller as mortgage interest, home mortgage interest on a Schedule A deduction. I know it's confusing because in both cases title remains in the seller's name until the balance of the agreement is satisfied but clearly a contract for deed is a sale for tax purposes. Now, can a lease option look like a contract for deed and thus be recharacterized as a sale? Yes, it can be, but rarely. 
most lease options are properly structured are not a sale until the option is exercised. Now the main difference between taxes is going to be the money issue. On a lease with option, the tenant pays market rent plus some option money up front and is willing to pay X dollars for the property. On a contract for deed, typically you're going to get more money down because it's a down payment and the buyer is getting the taxable benefit of ownership. Therefore, in a contract for deed, generally the buyer will put more down. And then the balance is amortized like a mortgage. So there's mortgage payments. Now, on a lower end property, a lease with option is more favorable to the seller. And the reason is, is because typically on low end properties, market rent is higher than what a mortgage payment would be. The opposite for high end properties, which a contract for deed might be better. So on a six or $700,000 property, which may not rent for enough, to justify uh, a lease with option, a contract for deed is based on a amortization of a sale price, um, uh, amortization of the payment, like a note. So you'll definitely get more money selling on a contract for deed on a higher end property. Either one can be done with an underlying loan left in place. Now, either one, a lease option or contract for deed, even though title doesn't transfer, will trigger a due on sale or acceleration clause on the underlying mortgage, but again, since title hasn't transferred, likely the bank's not gonna find out, so it's generally a non-issue, but just be aware that either one does technically trigger the due on sale. So for tax purposes, the one last thing I wanted to mention was, if you do a lease with option with a tenant buyer where you're the seller, and that tenant now says, okay, I wanna buy, you can do a 1031 exchange on the back end of that sale. So remember, the IRS doesn't call it a sale until the option is exercised. So when the tenant is ready to exercise, they'll give you notice of that. You can take the proceeds that you get and then roll that into another property or properties under a 1031 exchange where you cannot do a 1031 exchange on a contract for deed. Why? Because you already sold it. So if the buyer um, pays you on an amortized payment under the contract and then two years later wants to um, either sell the property or refi and pay you off the balance of the contract, you can't roll those proceeds under a 1031 because you already sold the property as soon as you signed the contract for deed. So one of the tax benefits of a lease option is the ability to do an exchange on the back end, whereas a contract for deed on the back end, and I say back end meaning you get paid off on the contract, it's not possible. Okay. Now, um, the last issue that I want to explore is how to get a buyer out who has defaulted on either a lease with option or a contract for deed. Now, in most cases, a defaulting buyer on a, on a short-term lease with option that really is a lease with option and not a disguised sale can usually be evicted. Sometimes courts have said the buyer has an equitable ownership and they have to be foreclosed, but in my experience, that very rarely happens. A contract for deed is different, though, because that really looks and smells like a mortgage. Now, in some states, for example, Illinois, has a specific process when someone defaults on a contract for deed that you can get them out of the property. It's longer than an eviction, but it's not quite as long as a foreclosure. Most states have no specific rules. So the problem is if you go to court and try to evict and the buyer shows up, which is rare by the way, because if the buyer can't pay you, they can't pay a lawyer. But if they do show up and make the argument, it's possible the court can require you to foreclose that property which means a long, drawn-out process, expensive, and so forth. You may want to try to settle out of court and avoid the process altogether. In some states, uh, courts have ruled that after a certain amount of equity or period of time, then it becomes a mortgage that has to be foreclosed. In some states, like Florida, almost universally it has to be foreclosed. And in other states, there are court decisions that go either way. So it depends on which state you're doing it. My advice to you is, if you're selling on a contract for deed and the buyer defaults, just give them some cash, get them to sign a release, and settle out of court. By the way, uh, one last issue you have to deal with, and that is when you're selling with owner financing, contract for deed, you have to deal with Dodd-Frank and the qualification that may be required under federal law or under your state SAFE Act. We're generally a lease with option if it's a true lease with option doesn't come under Dodd-Frank because it's not a sale and there's no new loan. If you have any further questions, please drop me an email. I'd be happy to answer them and explain the difference a little more for you between lease option and contract for deed, which I hope by now you're almost an expert on. This is Bill Bronchick. I hope you've enjoyed this video.